For as long as I could remember, I've had a love for stories, and this has manifested in a number of ways. However, for the most part of my life, it's been books. It was a safe bet to say wherever I was, a book was in some sort of proximity to me. And despite me wanting to have a relatively normal relationship with the books that I read, this was definitely not the case whether I liked it or not. I felt everything from the low lows to the high highs. I had a really, really deep connection to the protagonists and the characters in my books. Um, and really, I couldn't snap out of it until I turned that last page and sometimes a little bit afterwards as well. So my favorite book growing up, and honestly to this day, um, is a book that was published in 1970 by the Roald Dahl named uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. And um, that book was my favorite up until I saw the movie in uh, November 2009 with my mom, and it really just changed everything for me. I fell in love with the colors, the visuals, the animations, and most importantly, I fell in love with the characters that I already had such a deep connection with at the time. So, a little bit about this book slash movie that I'll be going on about for a few more minutes. The book and movie follows Mr. Fox, and through my extensive research for this talk, he seemingly has no first name, um, and in the book and in the movie, he lives a relatively normal life. He works a job as an editor at a no local newspaper. He has a wife. He has this real quirky son named Ash and a really strong community of creature friends that surround him. And he had a really strong sense of identity and belonging and comfort in the things that surrounded him in his life. However, through some sort of catalyst, inciting incident in both the book and the movie, he experiences a period of disassociation. He experiences a push and a pull from not only the outside, but the inside and internally about what it meant for him to be a fox at that time. And so through everything he learns in the movie and in the book, he comes out with not only a stronger sense of who he is, but a better sense of the relationships that he has with his wife, his kid, his friends, and his job. And that was a combination of everything he knew before, as well as everything he learned throughout the story and in all three acts. So, what does this children's book, movie, honestly really have to do with anything ever in the context of the real world? Um, not much, if you take it for what it is, a children's book, a movie, However, I believe that there's a lot that could be learned from this personal narrative of a claymation fox. Um, so personally, I have also struggled with a similar push and pull with my identity. I am black, I'm female, I am also Muslim, and a first-generation Somali-American. Um, and these are some of the more immediate and some of the more physical parts of my identity and my association. However, I would like to argue that things such as your name, my name being Samaya Ibrahim, your favorite color, I actually don't have one, um, favorite season, I like winter in Boston, believe it or not, um, are all parts of one's association, things that they can point to and say, that's a part of me, that's what makes me, me. However, I'm also a junior in high school, so a big part of my association includes the activities and the things that I do in school every day. I play field hockey, um, I'm on student council, um, I am president of my school's model United Nations team as well as serve as the student representative on the board of trustees at my school this year. So, with this push and pull similar to Mr. Fox, I have struggled with not only contention from the outside, but as well as sometimes some push from the inside of my identity circles. Um, things as innate and inherent as the color of my skin to the scarf that I wear in my head um, can sometimes serve as some pushback from the outside. I also receive some push and pull from the inside um, and sometimes in the greater Boston community, specifically the Somali community, often being cited as whitewashed or Americanized or not really having um, a sense of what it means to be a Somalian in America. And this is something that I have grappled with and something I'll probably 
grapple with for the rest of my life, which is inherently okay. So association, as it is, doesn't really belong in the category of bad or good. Um, it gives us comfort, validation. It makes us point to something and say that I belong there. However, there's, uh, important, it's important to note the duality with association. It can also lead us very much to be closed off to the outside and uh, can keep us from hearing other truths and other stories. So, how do we combat this? How do we try to reverse this period of dissociation that I sometimes experience and just like Mr. Fox experienced in the book and in the movie? Something that I've noticed is that Hollywood and movies has done a good job at narrating and outlining this specific um, plot line, and it's definitely used a lot in a lot of narratives. You can find it in the Dallas Buyers Club, which came out in 2013, as well as Brooklyn, starring Saoirse Ronan, and sometimes even more lighthearted movies like Mamma Mia from this past summer follow this narrative of a protagonist having a strong sense of identity, going through an inciting incident that leads them to some sort of disassociation, grappling with that, learning lessons along the way, and then coming out with an even, even stronger sense of who they are. So, though I'm only 16 and really just figuring it out currently, there are two things that I have learned um, can really help us avoid disassociation and leading people to have a stronger sense of who they are while also taking everything in the world has to offer. One being just to listen, and this can mean different things in the context of different interactions, but listening to stories that fall outside of your personal truth listening to different narratives, maybe reading from different news sources, even if it doesn't align with what you may believe. It's important to keep an open mind and realizing that one's experiences builds up their own truth and your own truth may not necessarily be one person's truth. And the second thing that we can all try to do is practice empathy. And it's a rather vague statement, however, um, really it's kind of like a fake it till you make it scenario. If you try to keep yourself in check and try to remind yourself that your truth isn't necessarily one's truth, you can eventually, maybe hopefully, have um, an implicit tendency to practice empathy. However, it's not tangible and it's something that I will continue to do for the rest of my life and I implore all of you guys to keep in mind in your interactions on a daily basis. So with that, my hope is that with empathy, recognizing other people's truths, and listening to people around us and on a global scale as well, we can come out having a strong sense of who we are while also taking, uh, taking in everything else the world has to offer. Thank you.